Good day everybody. In this video I'm going to explain how to use the hook brown failure criteria to analyze data from a triaxial test. And for this particular example we're going to look at the tensile strength and see how we can estimate. So first let's look at the data we are presented. So it's shown here in the table. Uh, we have um, uh, six uh, different test results and for each test uh, we measured uh, confining pressure, minor principal stress and major principal stress, sigma 1. So now let's look at the criteria and it's shown here. So this is the big equation. We call it a generalized uh, failure criteria because we can apply it for uh, intact rock samples and also we can apply it, uh, which is more important for uh, in the field. So when we look at rock walls, rock slopes, um, in the tunnels, so we can apply this uh, generalized uh, failure criteria. And uh, you will see that uh, in this formula we have two principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 3. We have uh, this stress which stands for unconfined compressive strength. And we have three constants, uh, MB, S and alpha. So this one B stands for blocks. So if we look at the rock wall, uh, there will be a set of discontinuities. So uh, we will need to estimate the effect of uh, those discontinuities on the overall strength of rock wall. And that's uh, how we use this um, uh, value MB. So uh, I'm going to uh, make a, a separate video to explain how we use this uh, generalized failure criteria because it will take a little bit of time to explain. So in this video, I would like to show you how we use um, a special case. So what is called uh, intact rocks. So typically it's uh, either small samples that we test uh, in a triaxial test. Um, or maybe uh, like some uh, exposure of rock wall with no discontinuities. So for this particular case, you will see that uh, we make assumptions that uh, S is equal to 1, um, alpha is equal to uh, 0 0.5, and instead of uh, MB, we're going to call it uh, MI. So uh, this will be uh, the formula for this particular case. And this is what we're going to use to estimate the data from this actual test because we tested uh, intact rocks without uh, joints and discontinuities. So uh, the way we're going to do it, uh, we're going to plot the data and it's uh, very similar to what we did uh, for Morcolon failure criteria. Please watch that video, it will be in the description of the video, the link. So um, in this case, uh, we're going to plot this as the difference uh, between uh, principal stresses in the power of two uh, against uh, uh, minor principal stress sigma three at failure. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, sorry. So uh, these are six points from uh, six uh, tests that we have. So okay, these all points plotted and. Um, Again, probably the best way to do it is to use Excel because Excel is going to give you a um, thread line, which is a line of best fit here. And on top of that, you're going to get this uh, equation, which will make your life much easier. And that's the equation that we will need. Well, if you don't have Excel, don't know how to use it in this case, uh, just draw by hand and do some uh, estimation also by hand. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, the one that we get from Excel, as uh, y equal uh, 517.78 times uh, x uh, plus 275.95. Okay, so now we're going to see that uh, y is actually uh, this component in the equation, right? Because that's what it says here. So it's the same thing. And then x, it's uh, uh, sigma 3f, so it's this one, right? So uh, now we will see that this component, the one that we add, uh, which is 275.95, uh, is going to be uh, unconfined compressive strength in the power of 2. 
and this is what we can write right now so uh, sigma ci so c means uh, unconfined compressive strength and i stands for intact rocks in the power of 2 it's uh, equal to 275.95 uh, which will give us that uh, sigma ci will be approximately uh, about 16.6 MPa, right? Okay. So uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at uh, this part of the equation, and you will see here that uh, uh, we will have this component m i times uh, sigma c i. So it should be equal to 517.78. And we already know, so okay, from here we're going to find that mi is equal to uh, 517.78 divided by sigma ci, which we already found, which is 16.6. 16.6. And that will give us approximately 31.2. So this one MI, um, it actually depends on the geology. Uh, it varies with the um, geology of the rocks uh, that we test. So the harder the rock, the higher MI you're going to uh, get. And finally, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to change the color to green. Uh, we're going to estimate the tensile strength, which we we'll ask for here. So this is the tensile strength. Um, the tensile strength will be negative. So that's why we have um, negative sign here. We already know all the values. We know Mi. Uh, we know um, also Sigma Ci. So what we can do is, and we know the assumption that S is equal to 1 for intact rocks. So what I'm going to do, I will rewrite it here. So sigma uh, ti, which is tensile strength, uh, divided by um, unconfined compression strength, 16.6. It is equal to negative um, then uh, square root of um, mi in the power of 2. Uh, Uh, it will be 31.2 in the power of 2 and uh, plus uh, 4 times s and it's 1 that's the assumption that we use and uh, subtract um, um, subtract uh, uh, mi which is 31.2 and I'm going to divide it by 2 Right, so um, well, hopefully you're really good at math, and you should be able to find that uh, tensile strength uh, will be a value of uh, 0.5 MPa. So this is the answer to this question. I hope you've learned how to use the Hook-Brown failure criteria for intact rocks. Uh, have a nice day, and bye.